Greetings. This is Amy Wentley with Chai Knuckles Knitting, and this is episode 2021-2, Intarsia Technique. So this is a series of three videos in preparation for an Intarsia Knit Along. Um, the Knit Along is from the Modern Daily Knitting Field Guide number 16, Painterly, with Intarsia Patterns by Kafe Facet. Um, this is the second in a series of three videos. The first was on, well, on setting up. This one is about the intarsia technique and the following video is going to be about weaving in ends and fixing mistakes. So let's get started. Um, in the last episode we cast on 26 stitches. We made a butterfly for yarn for our first block. We made a butterfly for the yarn in our second block and we made a butterfly for the yarn in our third block and we're going to work these six rows. So we're going to start just very simply knitting an edge stitch which is before this marker here and knitting eight um, stitches in my gray color. So this is our edge stitch. One. And I slip my marker and I'm going to pull a little yarn out of my butterfly now and I'm going to pull it very gently and it's going to pull right through that double loop that I made before and gives me a little bit more yarn. So I'm now going to knit eight So there we go. I knit my one edge stitch in gray and then eight stitches in gray. But now I need to change colors. On this very first row there is nothing special that we have to do at all. All you do is get your butterfly and make sure you pull, you um, grab it by not the knotted end, the other end. Okay, not the knotted end. And what we're going to do is we're just going to leave a tail and we're going to go and knit the next stitch, wrap the new color yarn around and pull it through. We are not going to do anything special here as far as twisting yarns or joining them or anything. We just add the new yarn and start knitting. And we're going to do this for a total of eight stitches. There we go. We've got eight stitches of our second color. It's always good to go back and count again. So yep, that was eight. And we're just going to let this drop. We're not going to do anything special with this white yarn. And we're going to go pick up our last color, which is the gray yarn for this last block. We're going to pick it up from the loose end. And we're just going to work as if to knit. We're going to leave a tail. We're going to wrap that yarn around and pull it through. And we're just going to leave the tail dangling there. And we're going to work. This is going to be nine stitches. It's going to be eight stitches in the chart. And there's going to be one edge stitch. And then when we get to the end of the row, this intarsia pattern is being, and all the patterns in the Modern Daily Knitting Book are all knit flat. So you're good. So we finished that row. That's row one. And we read that from right to left on the chart. And now we're just going to turn our work. And you'll notice when you turn our work, our, our um, butterflies are hanging in the back. And um, they might get a little bit twisted. You can kind of shake them out a little bit to untwist them. They'll probably be mostly okay. So you just let them there. And we're going to start the next row and this is going to be purl on the back. So we are going to purl nine stitches, one edge stitch and the eight stitches of the green. And we're reading the chart from left to right now because we're on the back side. So here we go. It's going to be one for the edge stitch 
and then we're going to do one, two, three, and we're going to work these stitches up until where the color intersects. So we're going to finish these last two gray stitches. Is that good? I think so. That looks good. Okay, now the only thing that you have to remember for intarsia, it's so easy, is new yarn under old yarn. So this is my old yarn. It's on this needle. Okay, and this is my new yarn in the white color. My new yarn is going to go under the old yarn. So see how the new yarn, the white, is under the gray. What happens is when I come around to purl that stitch, I'm going to be trapping the gray yarn here. And that's what keeps the hole from forming between the two colors. So at this point, whenever you get to an intersection, it's a good idea to um, tug on all your colors, okay, on all your tails there, okay? And we're going to work these eight stitches across until we come to the next intersection of color. We're coming up to it. Here's the end of the white. Okay, that's good. So we're at an intersection again. This is the end of the white and the beginning of gray. And as I said before, new color under old color. So this is my old color. This is my new color. My new color is going to come under the old color. I'm trapping the old color and I'm going to go purl that next stitch to trap it. I'm going to go ahead and tug on all my tails and I'm going to finish working this row in the gray color. And I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to go ahead and work the next row up to the next color change so you can see how that looks when you are um, on the right side of the knitting, the stockinette side. Okay, and the edge stitch. Okay, now consult your pattern for what to do with the edge stitches. Different patterns will tell you different things. Um, some will tell you to do stockinette stitch. Some will tell you to keep it garter stitch. Some will tell you to slip the first stitch. So just pay attention to what your pattern says. Okay, I'm gonna get the um, I'm going to get the camera to come a little bit closer to you. If we can just give this a second. Assuming I can get my camera to work here. Okay, so we're going to... Oops, that's how I do it. Sorry about that, folks. And here we go. I'm going to get a little bit closer for you so you can see what's going on here. Thank you for your patience. Appreciate it so much. Okay, so we're a little closer here, so let's do this one more time. We're going to knit the edge stitch with the gray color. And, and uh, just shake out your little butterflies. Make sure everybody's fine. So we're going to work the edge stitch. We're going to work eight stitches across until we get to the white again. And we get to the white. What was our rule? Doesn't matter if we're on the right side or the wrong side. The rule is the new yarn under the old yarn. So gray is my old yarn. I'm going to reach under my gray and get my new yarn, which is the white, and it traps that yarn in the back there. I'm going to go ahead and knit my first stitch, and I'm going to pull all my tails again. Make sure everybody's nice and cozy, and that's it. 
and I'm going to work these eight stitches. So um, what I am going to do now is I am going to pause the recording for just a little bit. I'm going to work ahead um, and I'm going to finish these six rows in the block that we set out here. Okay, the six rows. I'm going to finish here and when I come back we're going to be flip-flopping the colors and I will have also prepared all my colors for that before we come back too. So I'll see you back here in a minute. Hi, I'm back. So while the recording was paused, I went ahead and I finished up the six rows of the chart that we had been working with. I also prepared my um, butterflies for my next row. So when I come up to the next block, I know I'm going to need about 54 stitches of the light colors on each end and 48 in the middle for the darker color. <clears throat> but while I was doing my, um, I'm going to pretend something for you that I ran out of yarn, okay? <clears throat> so when I went to finish my sixth row and I'm on the back, I realized that I didn't have enough of the gray yarn left from this butterfly in order to finish up this row, okay? One thing I want to point out too is a lot of times when you get to the end of your butterflies you're going to end up with a little knot at the end of your yarn. That was the knot that you made to tie the butterfly. You're going to want to take that out so that you can weave this end in later. So um, just go ahead and be prepared to do that. This is nice sticky yarn. Okay, so I got to my last color here and I realized I wasn't going to have enough to do these nine stitches at the end here. So <clears throat> while I was preparing my yarn for the second section, when I prepared this butterfly, I did a few extra wraps on this um, so that I'll have enough for this to finish up this row and this next section up here. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Um, what I want to do is I'm going to spit splice. Okay, so I'm going to get one I'm going to take one edge of my old yarn and my new butterfly and I'm going to wet this one edge and I'm going to use my mouth. Um, you can use water from the tap or whatever. So I got that end wet and I'm going to lay it parallel to this other end so that you can see it there. See how they're laying parallel to one another. Okay. And I'm going to put it in my hand, in the palm of my hand. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create friction and heat here and a little bit of sweat. And that's going to make this wool felt together. Now this is 100% wool yarn and you really do need that in order to make a good join like this. Um, if you don't have 100% wool yarn or at least a significant amount of it is wool or an animal fiber, um, this won't work. So you'll just have to get a new piece of yarn and finish up that that. Um, that section and you need to um, really get some heat going and some sweat so I do this probably around 30 times because you saw how it fell apart just a second ago you've really got to get them warm and wet and get it to really stick together okay and that's doing pretty well I'm gonna want to be a little ginger with it but it should be okay now and so my new butterfly is connected to my old yarn now. So that's how you would add yarn whenever you might run out in a block. So you don't have to panic if you didn't have exactly the right amount of yarn. And you'll see otherwise I had close to this tail was kind of long left over on the edge. And see there's still a little knot there too that I'll need to get out. I'll do that later. Um, and I had about this much left of the white so we did pretty good estimating there. So now I'm going to take my new yarn under my old yarn and I'm going to work these last nine stitches of this row and then um, you're probably going to ask when I get to the end of this row I'm going to be changing colors right so when I get to the end of this row I'm not going to need this gray anymore so why did I go ahead and add 
the gray um, butterfly at this point and I will show you why. I'm going to do a little bit of a trick. This is just going to save me from weaving in and end later. Is I'm going to, I now turned over and I am now ready to start row seven here with my light color. Okay. And since this is a lot like the first row we did, where you're not going to need to do any special twisting when you add a different color here, you're just going to go ahead and start knitting. You're going to pick up your um, new butterfly of the new color. You're going to wrap and pull it through. Okay, so I'm going to do that once and I'm going to slip my marker and I'm going to tighten everything here. Okay, and I'm, then I'm going to continue knitting. But after I get to this second stitch, I'm going to want to tighten again all the little tails that you have everywhere. Tighten everybody. Now what I want to do, and this is completely optional, okay, but I just wanted to show you this little trick. I know I have my gray yarn here and a butterfly that has enough to do this whole section in the middle here. It's going to be this section here of gray, okay, but I need to get this gray yarn from here over to here because that's where it's going to start while I'm knitting with the white yarn. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to pretend like I'm capturing a float in Fair Isle. So I am going to hold the gray in my left hand and I'm going to hold the white in my right hand and I'm going to capture these like floats in Fair Isle knitting just across this so that I can get my gray yarn over to where I need to start. So I'm going to insert my needle as if to knit I'm going to put my right needle under the gray yarn in my left hand and I wrap the white yarn and just pull the white yarn through and the gray yarn is trapped in the back now and it's going to just travel along with my white yarn very nicely. I'm going to work the next stitch regular with my white, just a regular knit stitch. The next stitch I'm going to insert as if to knit I'm going to come under the gray yarn in my left hand to capture it. I'm going to wrap the white and pull it through and that's captured again. Then I'm going to do the next stitch regular and the following stitch I'm going to insert and I'm going to go under the gray in my left hand and wrap, pull through and the next stitch I'll just do regular. And then the very last stitch, I'm going to trap this again. I'm going to go under as if to knit. I'm going to go under the gray yarn in my left hand. I'm going to wrap the white yarn and pull it through. And now, as you can see, this trapped, my gray yarn is now here ready to start this second block. And it was trapped all the way along the back here while I was knitting these white stitches on the front. So I'm going to drop my white butterfly now and I've got my gray butterfly already here and it's actually already under the white yarn and it is ready to start knitting those eight stitches in the middle now with that butterfly. Now if you didn't want to do that, that was entirely optional. You didn't need to drag that yarn along for the ride if you didn't want to. You could have just picked up your new gray butterfly and added it right there. Now these intersections where they're like four colors mixing is where you could potentially get some holes. That's right here where these four colors mix. So you want to make sure you pull your ends really nicely, but what's really going to fix things is when we weave in ends at the end of the project, and I'm going to cover that in the next video. So right now we got to the end of the gray and we're coming to the white, and we're going to bring the, pick up the new white um, butterfly that we have. We're just going to go as if to knit. We don't have to do anything special on this first row of the new color. So that's one and we're going to pull all our little ends. There should be four of them there because that's one of those intersections where all the colors join. Okay and we're going to work till the end. Good. Okay. So, um, again, 
we get to the end here and we are going to turn and we're just going to be using the white yarn again so we're good so when we get to the other side and we come to an intersection again it's after this first row then that's where we're going to start crossing our yarns again and it's always new yarn under old yarn so we are coming right here it's a long video thank you for sticking with me just do this one more thing when you get to the intersection again I'm just going to show you one more time and it's the same on the front or the back you're going to take the new yarn which is the gray under the old yarn which is the white and you're going to try to get tails out of the way and you're going to go ahead and purl this one and that crosses the yarns so what's going to happen now is <clears throat> this is going to be the end of this video so um, before the next video I'm going to go ahead and finish up these two sections of the chart and I'm going to bind off and then in the next video I'm going to show you how to fix mistakes and weave in ends so thank you and join me for the next video bye bye